people are so scared to get out of their element and go to a different country because of these things they hear. And then we get there and the locals are like the nicest people ever. There is no guided tours of this place. It is secret Zapatista territory where tourists just don't belong. He has to get in our car to let the locals know that we're with the Zapatistas. I think there's dangerous people in every country, but there's also really, really good people in every country. And we found those good people in Mexico. No, you need to wear a life jacket. I'm like, oh, okay. As I'm going and the whistle's like going off, that'll kill me. You can tell they're just shaking their heads and saying no. And I'm just kind of like looking at Chase and he's like looking at me. We just made it to Mexico. Travis, can you hit him with the oh yeah? Oh, yeah. We're about to go check out some cenotes, which are basically just massive holes in the ground with fresh water below and perfect jumps everywhere. I'm not hitting them with the oh, yeah. It's kind of funny, there was one cenote where the, the guy was trying to explain to me that, no, you need to wear a life jacket. Put this on. Uh-oh. I'm like, oh, okay. It was off to a little bit of a rocky start, especially considering I think like four people lost their credit cards and wallets in like the first day. <laughs> so that was awesome. We kind of thought that Mexico would just kind of be no rules, no problems. But unfortunately, we've been running into a lot of problems. And we've been getting kicked out quite a bit. What's, what's going on? I'm sorry, I mean, if we, I, I didn't see any signs. I feel like, yeah, that's not good. I feel like you should just speak Spanish. Like a dumb gringo card. Yeah, okay. Access to the cenotes is forbidden for you. You can still stay here in the area, you can go for lunch, but you cannot go to the cenotes. Yeah, that's right. Made it. And, uh, we're up 
here on top of this unknown height waterfall. Unknown. It's big. It's Are they dead checking it down there? Yeah. They were in the water when I was getting the trail. I slammed like 20 feet down. Nice. Nothing. I looked around with the goggles. It's so dark, but I didn't see any obstacles. I was definitely nowhere near the bottom when I was down there. It's nice to have it for sure answer instead of, oh, it's kind of deep, but... Oh, they're saying if you jump, you're going to die. Well, that too, but yeah. <laughs> they said they don't want to be held responsible. Yeah. They're telling us there's rocks down there. Like, bro, we just checked. <laughs> Maximum, and he said, minimum. <laughs> oh, they're looking at us. <laughs> yeah, I just saw him point up here. Can we just like stand on it and visualize? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit balls. This is sick, dude. Uh, I wish we could just get a tape down. That's a dude. Yeah, I'd say at least 120. I'd say 120. How are you thinking about standing there right now? No. They saw that we were kind of all filmers and they weren't having it. Basically said uh, I wasn't allowed in. And I started looking on Google Earth and I realized maybe I could sneak in. And as I'm getting a shot of the main ruin, a guy rolls up on a motorbike, and I really didn't know what to do. I'm even like, Robert, please distract him. Like, I didn't know what to do. I'm trying to collapse my pole. I'm freaking out. I'm like, I'm gonna end up in Mexican jail right now. As soon as I get my pole collapsed, I did what I knew I could do, and that was run, run fast. <laughs> It's high key, there's a lot of tourists, there's a lot of security and staff everywhere, and everywhere up above is off limits. So it's gonna be really hard to get anywhere up there, anywhere near the takeoff without getting caught. If we do, we're gonna maybe only be able to send one or two people off before they really start yelling and stuff. So we're trying to figure out if we wanna do this or not. You won't even really think about a whistle when you're Flying through there. I mean, not when you're flying through. If it's like right it's like, as I'm going and the whistle's like going off, are up there that'll like, kill me. Oh, they... I mean, we know we're gonna get caught, but I mean, look at it. It's worth it right now. Yeah, there's <sighs> no way you could even, you know, there's so many different languages right there being spoken, probably. I'm thinking. The problem is todos uh, los turistas en agua y lo que puede saltar y mortar. Uh, uno de los turistas. I want to go do it. I really want to go do it. Let's do it, man. We're gonna go check it out at least. I mean, I'm I'm willing to do it, but I just don't want to land on people. So you're dropping from full daylight sun into a dark hole. I didn't jump it the day before because I was kind of like, oh, I'll just get a couple, you know, shots of people filming, see how it goes. I just wasn't really motivated. I think I was kind of like battling some stomach issue. So the next day when we went back, I'm like, 
oh, I'm extra motivated today. Like, I gotta do this. I didn't get to do it the day before. And Chase didn't either. We were both kind of like, no matter what, dude, let's jump this. They keep putting more and more people up at the barrier and uh, finally comes down to it where we're like, we're either gonna do this or we're not. So I was like, Chase, what are you feeling? He's like, I don't know, let's just walk over there. And we didn't even have a plan, we're just walking. Yeah, dude, this, we're not getting past that. They're all just standing there. Three of them. Dude, are we doing it? Like, kind of trying to whisper to him? The guards are just staring us all down. There's no way that we're gonna be able to get past those guys. Damn, you think? Yeah, I wish you going. I wish you going. I don't give a shit if they touch me. I'll we went over there the first time. I'm done this I came here. I woke up early. I'm in a grumpy mood. So they were not gonna let us jump without the owner's permission. We get over there, and you can tell they're just shaking their heads and saying no. And I'm just kind of like looking at Chase, and he's like looking at me. We got a couple people behind us. All of a sudden, I hear Chase out of the corner of my eye. He's like, how fast can you run? This is so awkward. How fast can you run? <laughs> So of course it's the Canadian that bails, you know, because they're too polite. They don't want people mad at them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Logan. <laughs> Holy fucking shit, dude. I just felt too bad for the guy. <laughs> Oh, I know, I heard the rock! Oh my god, holy shit. What'd you do? Dove half. I was like, I couldn't get to the right takeoff first because the guy was there. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. what stuff happened? Oh, holy shit, dude. They're so pissed, dude. That, oh, he ate shit when he, when he went to chase you. Yeah, I saw that. That was so pissed. I was like the birds. Did you see that? Remember when I jumped the bird from under the thing? Dude, really? Yeah. I was like, Push me off that ledge, seriously. Yeah, I was like, don't touch me. And then Robert distracted him, and I was just like, just enough time to straight jump. <laughs> There's a bunch of people down there, so I was like, being precise. Oh, it smells so bad in there. Oh, God, we gotta let that happen. I've always wanted to go to Agua Azul after watching Chasing Niagara. In that movie, there's a bunch of professional kayakers who trek down Agua Azul, and at the bottom of this river, they come across what's called the Five Kings. It's just cascading waterfalls of super unnatural looking blue water. It's one of the most unique places in the world. We're just trekking through the jungle. I have my massive backpack with my camera bag in front. I'm heavy and I'm hot. <laughs> Straight up. I, I think we're dying. Oh, it's like a fucking billion degrees out, dude. It's like a, a tunnel. You just have to squat all the way through all of this. Pinche gringo trying to find a freaking waterfall. Cascada. Cascada Agua Azul. Okay, this is the kind of hiking you gotta do for some blue ass water. Fucking sharp ass. Fuck you. We didn't make it very far until we were interrupted by a group of locals that actually had machetes and didn't want us to, uh, to cross their land. But as soon as they saw the blinking light on the GoPro camera, they got kind of freaked out and they were pointing at it and pretty hesitant. And the language barrier was very rough. We didn't have anybody with us that could speak Spanish. Uh, we were trying to explain to them that we wanted to get down to the waterfalls. I think we just need to wait for more of yeah, yeah. yeah, that would be it. When we showed it to our friends that could speak Spanish, they basically said that they would like to give us permission to go down there, but the Zapatistas that own the land were not cool with it, and they were afraid of, of them getting mad at them for letting us through. 
Zapatistas are a revolting group against the Mexican government and they're known to be pretty dangerous. The Zapatistas do not want the Mexican government to exploit their land for money. We basically stick out here like crazy, so anything we try to do, they're like, oh, white people coming through my property? Like, <laughs> well, are we coming back tomorrow to try and make it? I think maybe, yeah, if we can pay them off or something. We made it back to Agua Azul, uh, day two here now. We're gonna try and go back through that uh, one initial village from where we got stopped last time, uh, which should lead us right to those big boys we've been we've been looking for. Um, hopefully we don't have to do too much bushwhacking through the jungle because that was just awful yesterday. We went, no cameras out, everything put away, um, tried to be really respectful with them. They, as soon as they saw us coming onto their land, they, they called the elders and they bunch of the guys came running at us with some machetes and it was kind of a, the highest stress situation of the whole thing it ended up being really cool they they were really nice we had our friends with us that could speak Spanish and uh, people were doing backflips for the kids and entertaining them and we thought for sure we were getting getting access that day they finally came back and the elders said that we could not get permission that day they would have to check with the authorities and the Zapatistas if we could go and but there was no way we were getting in there that day. Maybe, maybe that was the problem you said you're from the States. Yeah. Should have said you're from Canada. He wants to share it. He said we have the same blood, we have the same heart, you know, all this stuff. It's like really nice to say, you know, about gringos, but mm -hmm. because of these escalating political scenarios in Chiapas, and these like more extremist movements starting to arise. The safety of his own community and his yeah. people could be at stake. That was a huge bummer. Got turned around, had to go back upstream to the, the more touristy waterfalls and send those instead. I knew I wasn't any level to be kayaking those waterfalls, but as a cliff jumper, I started paying attention on the corners. They think it was jumpable. So Brandon and I went upstream at Agua Azul to try and find a way across the river and we ended up finding this sick suspension bridge. We're like, oh, what an easy way to get across. I made it about halfway over. I was warned by multiple people that there were, there were very dangerous people over there and to absolutely do not cross the bridge. And then I saw a little kid go across with like his mom. So I figured, oh, that's okay. And then I was warned again very heavily absolutely do not go across there because it will not be okay for me so so after setback after setback this was a huge heartbreaker and we just figured 
we were never gonna be able to see these beautiful waterfalls downstream. I decided to get my pack raft at the end of the day to hit a few rapids. And one of the workers there noticed and he actually was pretty excited about it. I come up to John Fay and the worker talking and uh, the worker showing John Fay a video of some kayakers that apparently he edited. And I, I thought it was awesome. I asked him, hey, any chance you know Rafa Ortiz? And his eyes lit up and he's like, see, si, see, si, it's me amigo. We ended up asking him, hey, is there any chance we can get down to the five kings downstream? So it appears we have one last chance to make it down to the Five Kings. The guys debated and they were a little hesitant at first. We were already 0 for 2 and I look at Faye, I'm like, dude, we, we have to go. There's, no matter what, let's at least just give it a chance. By the end of the evening, we convince Johnny Boy, Travis, John, and myself. It was a green light for us four, and we we're gonna hope for the best, and, and we had to wake up super early in the morning. We were pretty limited with this language barrier. John Faye is the only one that can speak Spanish. It's kind of sketch. He has to get in our car basically to let the locals know that we're with the Zapatistas. But we took a chance and uh, we allowed this guy to get in our car. It's crazy, when we parked, I noticed they put a Z in the rental car, in the dust, and it's to mark our car for no one to mess with it. Because it's very obvious it's a rental car. And um, putting that Z, I guess, keeps it safe. Last, we finally made it to the Five Kings. I, I don't think they're gonna have a problem with this trophy. All the stories you hear of these Zapatistas being extremely dangerous, by the end of the trip, they ended up being incredibly nice to us. Just for them to take us down there, I was extremely thankful we let a stranger in our vehicle and led us through the jungle. We were here like a week ago. We jumped it successfully one round and we came back, thought we had the clear, and turns out that was not the case. Like only a couple of the employees said we could do it. So it was pretty chaotic. Now we're back, everyone's totally fine with it. We got a bunch of locals as a little crowd. Uh, the only bummer is it's like a little darker down there today, I think since the sun's out. 
which kind of intensifies things a bit. You just have yeah. to wait for a cloud. Yeah. yeah. yeah really mm -hmm. Having the bright sun on top entering to a black hole, it's not very ideal lighting. I'm sure once we get like a jump in, we'll all kind of like feel the vibe and keep going and hopefully get like, I'd like to hit this thing like two or three times, session it a little bit. One. so sick. I thought they'd be like throwing us out of here. The owner of the property wants any photos or videos, like I can send them over or whatever. And he's like, that was sick, but like it's not allowed, so we don't want to like advertise it. So it won't be necessary. And like, but it was sick. <laughs> My mind is completely shifted of all these, you know, stories I tell you not to travel down there. And I actually canceled my flight and stayed for like another week with the boys and we had a great time. <laughs> it's definitely a lot better today and more calm than uh, asking how fast they can run. <laughs> a Mexico trip wouldn't be complete without going to a good old local fair. All of a sudden there's like 10 of these white guys jumping in there, beating up on each other and the crowds loved it. Chase and Brandon are trying to break each other's hips. <laughs> Don't eat too many tacos because it'll still get you. And uh, those toilets, not very friendly. You're lucky if you come across a toilet with a toilet seat. So in Mexico, you can't exactly flush your toilet paper. So they have a little trash bin on the side of the toilet where you, you put your toilet paper in. And I remember coming into the bathroom one day and it literally was a pyramid and the very top piece of toilet paper was just balanced on there. And I was like, what is wrong with you guys? It just seemed like a big game of shit Jenga. And whoever put the last piece of toilet paper up there and it fell over had to uh, clean it all up. It was, it was me and it was disgusting. I had a few people yelling at me to just like, I'm gonna forget to take off the sunglasses. Let's just redo it. That's yeah. <laughs> I, there was really nothing stopping you from. from... <laughs> okay. I don't know what to do with my hand. Don't rub me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are out in the jungle of Yucatan. We uh, have been lost for about three and a half hours now. We All of our no phones idea. died. We lost all cell phone Dude, reception. Dude, I'm so thirsty. Dude, I don't know what we're gonna do. We've been trying to find this 115 foot waterfall, but we're lost. Not a good place to be lost. Whoa, where the hell did that uh, Okay, so, sorry, sir. We can sir. get a What? Did you, say, did you say chupacabra? I'm so scared right now. Let's get out of here. Meaning, Did you hear? Did you hear that? What was that? Dude. Oh. Wait, I hear sound here. Oh, it's oh, together. Oh, oh, oh my whoa. god. Whoa. Dude, dude, I. That was I not no a good sound. Going. That was not a good sound. Oh my god. Oh. Dude, dude, go get him. Go get him. Robert! Robert! Are you there? What was that? Oh god. Okay. Robert! I'm coming for you! Ah! I'm Jenkin. Can be mentioned by your gold cup. This is back at Patch. Oh! 
Oh, dude, Nick. Oh, oh, dude. Dude, where have you been? There you guys are. You guys good? Yeah, we yeah. met a new friend. He totally sends it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 